and hopefully we will fly the airplane not only at this altitude but we're going to fly it in to the crater of the Irizo volcano and hopefully get it out again or well, what you are seeing uh, right now is really the first crater of the volcano which has been filled up with volcanic ash due to subsequent eruptions uh, as you can see, the visibility is not 100%, but it is certainly better than it was just 10 minutes ago. Uh, behind me, behind the camera, and we will pan round, is the present crater of the volcano. And I understand the last eruption of this volcano was in 1962. And we're all set, ready to fire. And, uh, the idea is that uh, there's the fence to stop people falling into the, the actual crater itself. And as I say, the idea is that uh, John will try and fly his airplane as far over the crater as possible. The crater is approximately 1,050 meters across and approximately uh, between 250 and 300 meters deep. Well, I don't think John's going to actually get the plane to go right down to the bottom of the volcano, but uh, we will certainly make an attempt. Is this hot shot good? <laughs> Okay, we are now actually in the crater of the volcano. As far as we know, this has never ever been done before with a remote controlled airplane. I think you might be able to see in the background the other side of the, the crater. Just in the background there, that dark area. John is actually now in the mouth of the volcano. <laughs> he did a roll. He's now below the level and a loop in the crater of a volcano. Now I'm going for distance now. Okay, John says he's going to try for a distance. Well, he's going to be able to fly right across. Going down. Okay, he says he's going to go down. Don't lose it, John. I've lost you, John. Coming up. I got you, okay. Take it down if you can. down there you can see the bottom of the volcano the crater and John is almost at the bottom of the crater now this is absolutely unbelievable <laughs> and it's cleared up for us we can now see the whole of the crater of the Irazu volcano As far as we know, this has never, ever been done before. Okay, I'm going to make a path up towards us now. Okay, he's out of the, the crater, pretty much. He's at our level. John Cook is flying his own design airplane called the Bandit. It has a diamond airfoil. It is powered with an OS-32, and it's guided by a Futaba radio. I'm going to go inverted. He says he's going to take it inverted. That's a inverted pass. Oh. Oh, John, bring it up. Bring it up. Get it up. Get it up. Oh. Well. Okay, it's all right. That's it. Well, as you saw, John actually lost his airplane. Uh, it looked like it went into a spiral dive. 
Uh, obviously, we don't want to leave the airplane there if possibly we can get it out. John's going to attempt to uh, rescue the airplane. Let's see if, uh, without uh, risking life and limb, let's see if we can actually do it. Now, where, which bush are you? But he says he can see it. See, that to me is... That's more dangerous than that. That's very close to that edge. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, he's good. Okay, can you just turn it off? Good. Okay, John has reported that he's obviously found the airplane. There's no basic damage except uh, possibly to the, the nose wheel that's uh, a little bent back. Um, we've tried the radio and it looks as though the radio is still working and hopefully John can get it back without any more risk to him. As I stated, this crater is uh, 1,050 meters across and between 250 and 300 meters deep. <laughs> this might add a little bit of spectacular to it. Mr. Joyce is uh, <laughs> stating an obvious fact, but um, I think anybody can see that this has been a, a genuine attempt. Um, not all tests are perfect, and this is a very spontaneous test. There was no real preparation made for this test. Um, we just decided very late last night that uh, if John wanted to live up to his reputation of being the crazy Canadian, then this was certainly the way to do it. This is a conclusion to the 12th International Fun Fly in Costa Rica. And we would like to thank all the people that participated and all the manufacturers that were present with their equipment here in Costa Rica. Okay, everything's fine. We'll put it back up in a couple of minutes. No, I think, well, John, no, we... just to show you that it wasn't broken. <laughs> okay, John insists that he wants to start up the airplane in a little while. Um, rest. Mainly to show that you was to show you that the uh, the airplane wasn't damaged, and I also think he wants to show that uh, he designs really out of this world type airplanes. Uh, it's uh, damage. It's a unique design. Which, where, right what the, 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 only the landing gear. Okay, this is the only damage to the airplane. Not how it's fixed. John has instant fix for it. Bend. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll leave it bent, and I'll bring it down and land it on its wheels. Okay, he's going to fly it again, he says, with a bent undercarriage. Futaba and OS and APC conquer the okay. crater at over 10,000 feet mm -hmm. by the crazy Canadian. I think John's going to start the plane up again. <laughs> but look, you got a lot of fog coming in, John. I, I think you're better off. To... Okay. It's got to fly after it went down the crater. Okay, John insists, as you, as you heard, that uh, his <laughs> planes are indestructible. I've plane in the crater and flown after. <laughs> A second record. I think we may be tempting good fate, but... Uh, the record would be out the good day, though. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Keep it up here, John. Keep it up here. Keep it up here. Okay. okay. There, there we go. go. We did it. Okay, it still flew. <laughs> and it even taxis back to where John is standing. The plane lives to fly again. <laughs> Major success. <laughs> The next time it will be better. <laughs> I know.